So on here with Merck from NSB. Can you introduce yourself a little bit, brother? What's going on, man? My name is Merck. Uh, I run Never Satisfied Builds. Been running it since 2019. And we do a lot of shows, a lot of charity work and stuff like that. And uh, basically, we're here to support y'all and, and your builds and show them off the way they deserve. You know, a lot of these bigger pages won't give you time of day, but we definitely will. So shoot us oh, in the yeah. DMs. Let's post you on IG. It's uh, at never satisfied under or never underscore satisfied underscore builds. Look for the skull. You can't miss us. We're really going in on the, on the, you know, branding right there. But I mean, to go off that, let's talk a little bit about your show. I mean, we talked about a little bit. You haven't been running it too long. I mean, what's on? It's, it'll be a third. It's third year. This will be our third year when we do it. Uh, we we so our show is a little bit different than other people's show. Um, we do ours in December, so basically we're the last show of the year. Um, and every year it's a Toys for Tots drive. And the main thing that makes our show different is, yeah, we have normal judging. We have normal people. You know, we got you know respectable guys that go out and judge your vehicles or whatever but the prestigious awards are called the tots choice award and we level them up every year man like i said this is our third year i don't know how we're going to top last year's last year's trophies were just they were amazing and anybody that you know or, or if you see anybody that's got one they brag about them um but the kids are actually the ones that judge your vehicles and one of the things that we really believe in is kids because they're the future of us building trucks, cars, bikes, whatever. They're the ones they see their own, you know, their own flares and everything like that. And, you know, they don't see the money side of it like adults do. You know, we see the expensive wheels. We see the expensive lift kits. We see, you know, the high end paint jobs or wraps or whatever. You know, the kids don't see that. They just see what they like. And for you to get a tots choice, I mean, we had a guy our first year, our first show, we had a guy who came in and a, he just wanted to come and be a part of it to give back to the community. But he was driving a, I'll never forget it. Uh, it was a 2014 charger and it was bone stock and it, but it was like this purple blue. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but it was like this purple blue and he won a Tots choice award, man, because they just loved the color of his car bone stock. There was nothing done to the car, but the kids loved it because of the color. So, I mean, you know, that gives anybody a chance to win, you know, and for me, that's a huge, huge part of what we do as a community, as an automotive enthusiast community. Uh, you know, we, we do what we like, but I mean, real recognition is when you have a child that can walk by and be like, oh, look at that. You know, normal adults, we see money and, and kids don't see that. So we put our show on for the kids and we raise toys and all that stuff and we have a great time and I can't wait for this one to come up, uh, 2021. And we've been talking about that. I mean, your show has grown exponentially. I mean, it's only the third year and what you said, looking at how many trucks. So the first year we did 103 trucks with only 30 trucks registered. Um, and like I said, this is a car and truck show. We had some cars come down that follow NSB, um, but mostly it was trucks. We had 103, uh, 2020 with the coronavirus and everything else going on. We had 312 vehicles and that was everything from hot rods to, to Corvettes, to trucks, to you name it. We pretty much had it. We had bikes out there and this is in December guys. And you know, it's a huge show. And, and this year we're, we're kind of leaning towards about a thousand vehicles. Uh, going to be at the show, all donating toys. Uh, we filled up the entire, I have a 05 avalanche and we took the bed covers out. We had the entire bed full. We had it overflowing onto the, onto the ground. Uh, it took two trucks, full, full beds to haul all the toys off. Um, and it was just, it was, a, it was an amazing experience, you know? So I'm super pumped about 2021. It's, it's going to be above and beyond anything I could ever imagine. I think the the big thing with this year was the shows are were just wild. I mean, the ones so far and the ones coming up are just going to be wild because people are itching to get out there. You know, those SEMA guys, I mean, moving on to a bigger show, but those SEMA guys, you know, they're ready to get out there, you know, especially just from 2020 where their builds were supposed to be featured. featured and now there's, you know, the 2021s 
and the 2020s are all going to be in one venue is going to be huge. And I think still with your show, people are going to be itching, you know, they had a, a, you know, a one year hiatus to do nothing. And, you know, they're just building their truck and they're ready to get it shown off. Well, and that's the one thing that we've noticed, uh, you know, especially around here. Um, you know, we've noticed a lot of the guys that we know have actually built, we, we have locally, uh, four SEMA builds right now uh two are completed and th those guys have been itching I mean you know like you said they're itching to get out because you know when you build something and you put your heart and soul in it you want it to be seen and they haven't had the opportunity to and I mean a lot of these shows are especially this year from last year they're gonna be over the top with vehicles because there's so many guys that you know hey they're down and out all year last year. They have nothing but time to build on their trucks or cars or whatever, you know? So this year with all the shows coming out full blast, it's going to be packed and it's going to be awesome because a lot of things, yeah, you might've seen, but we've got some guys that are coming out with stuff that you've never seen before. Um, and you know, different kind of air rod setups, uh, uh a different kind of sound system we've got we've got a couple of guys that have done some sound systems that are just insane for the small size of the speakers to the sound that they put out and it's it's incredible you know and so those guys like you said they are they're itching to get out these shows this year are going to be massive um i look forward to you know any of the shows unfortunately i'm not going to be able to make it to a lot of them because my wife's pregnant so and she goes to every show with me. So if you guys ever see me, you see her. Um, and she's just, it's fixed to be summer and she's ready to pop now. So we're going to try and make it to as many as we can before our daughter comes. And then we're probably going to have to sit out for a little while until our, our Toys for Tots show. But it's going to be, it's going to be a riot, guys. So at, at least if you guys can get out to shows in your area even if they're small ones you can't make it to daytona that's support cool. the local right. ones yeah support the local ones because these guys they had to shut down last year too you know um and that was one of the problems or you know we projected we projected 700 vehicles at our show this past year from the first year just because of how much never satisfied has grown and um you know, so we projected a larger number, but be, due to Corona and everybody's scared of it or they didn't know, you know, whatever. I think the big uh, part was at that time, it was so uncertain because Corona just came exactly. around probably like November at that point. People were like, what the fuck's going on? They really didn't know. Well, it, it came out in February, but the problem with our the, the problem with our show was, you know, a lot of people uh, – in their areas okay like where where i live at the mask mandates are not like strictly enforced you oh know? neither here you know it's not like crazy it's not california know, tyrannical Texas. Rules. right there's yeah. no tyrannical rules about masks i mean yeah you know wear a mask when you go in the bank whatever yeah they're gonna be strict about that but you know most places around here you walk in nobody says anything to you uh but you know that was one of the things that a lot of people didn't know was especially at my show i mean my show i put I, when we rented our venue they were like well what are you going to do about corona i was like i'm gonna put out a little itty bitty piece of paper that says if you catch corona it's not my fault wear a mask <laughs> it's your own will it's on you i mean if you want to wear one you think they work wear one but i don't think they work i'm not going to wear one i would rather breathe fresh air and yeah. you know so and it was amazing at the turnout we had i mean the guys that came out were just spectacular we had so many great guys so many great builds i mean it was just spectacular so i'm i'm really grateful for that and i can't wait like i i can't stress enough that i can't wait for this year to see what we come out with and guys if you come to our show be sure to please if you have kids bring them bring them they're yeah, they're the kid oriented shows you know they're the biggest part we you know a lot of things is and this is the other thing you know you go to these bigger shows you know um even Daytona, dude, you can't take your kids out on the strip. There's little girls that are riding in the back of trucks showing their breasts and stuff like that. You don't want your kids that are five, six, seven years old seeing that. Yeah, I mean, we can't have that. I mean, I, know, I brought my niece right. to freaking, uh, what's it called? Um, there's bike shows that, you know, my family takes the little kids to all the time, and I can't believe it. Right. 
it's just uh, you know and, and that's the way we, we're trying you know i try and raise my kids the way i think society should be raised and I, I think society right now is such a it's just a complete screw up you oh, know? Yeah. It's i think there's society, a point everybody's got so much hate in their system but yet they don't understand that they're raising it and breeding it themselves they they're not you know you're not being tolerant to everybody else and these kids that are running around right now they weren't beat as 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 children you know when yeah. they did wrong you know yeah. oh well don't do it again Timmy. you know it, that's the kind of mentality that these parents have nowadays and now they squat their trucks and that's i think that's one of the reasons why squatted trucks <laughs> they're trying to buck the system because they think they don't do any wrong but i don't think their parents raised them right you know, yeah. if you have a two wheel drive, you slam it. If you have a four wheel drive, you lift it. I'm not going against any guys that are two wheel drives and lifted. That's fine. But I'm just saying, when I was brought up, if you had a two wheel drive, you slammed that thing on the ground. If you had a four wheel drive, you jacked it up. That's that was the rule, you know. And and yeah, yeah. You know, you had a muscle car, you built it to go fast. You had an import, you slammed that thing and stanced it out. That's what you did. You know, it, it was just that was the rule. And I think nowadays people, I don't know, there's so much cross wires for brain mentality right now that it's just people are stupid, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, it is a fad. It's a new style that came out. So, I mean, and I'm not trying to knock on squatted trucks because, I mean, once again, like I've told you and several others, I've seen some really good looking squatted trucks. Oh, there's a couple, think, but there's not a lot. Yeah, I mean, I don't like them when they're riding on the back tire, but I mean, if you've got a squat and and you know you got a four inch lift in the back and an eight in the front with some thirty seven, some twenty six by sixteens, I mean that looks pretty cool. I mean, it's huge. I mean, also know? a squat that's like maybe an inch to three inches difference. I mean, that's not much of a squat, but it it, yeah. it still looks all right. But I think the ones that kill me though is these guys that go out. And they put the nine inch McGoy in the front and, and negative and, four and in the back drop shackles in the rear. And then they tuck some street tires on 26, like some reps and tuck them underneath the back. And they just look stupid rolling down the road. I mean, why would you, you know, but that's the, that's the mentality that they have. And like I said, I can't hate on all squad of vehicles because I've seen some that I really, I really think that, Hey, you know, because of the style it is, they did a good job on that build, but you know, there's those kids that it's just, it's all about how high can I go in the front and how low can I go in the back? And you, you know, it's just stupid looking, but I mean, like I said, some of the guys, man, I've seen that, that just, man, they, they really take pride in their builds. They put time and money in their builds. They're not, you know, all uh, tweaked out is what I'm going to call it. You know, yeah, yeah. tweakers. You know, they look good and, and, but it, I just don't, I, I mean, the style is going to obviously last so many people do it now that that style is not going to fade out for a while. And there's guys like me that, Hey, I don't, I don't like that style, but you know, and, and, and it's kind of creating a divide in the automotive community because, you know, when you see squatted truck, what do you associate that with? You associate that with kids that are in fights all the time at shows. You associate it with with like kids hissy fits brats. Out. It's just brats. I mean, they yeah, think they got all this money and shit too, and they they think they're they go up to. I've seen plenty of cases. I mean, I've gone to a couple larger shows, and it, it's a lot. It's a lot more present in smaller shows, but you see those kids. There's kids around here that drive around with squad trucks too. But you know, you see those kids. They walk up to guys. You know, reputable guys. You know have the nice hundred thousand dollar truck and they just get in their fucking face and just rip on them. It's like, and they didn't do shit to them either. I mean, maybe they don't like squatted trucks, but people also, people don't like, you know, a lot of things. A lot of people have opinions on things like you go out and say, Oh, I don't like coffee. And then this guy's like, Oh, I'm a killer for coffee on a coffee company. You don't ever see anyone getting up in people's face just because they don't like coffee. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same concept. Realistically. It's just a bigger hunk of metal. It's just a bigger toy. I think that the the main thing that we have to draw from as a community, because once again, 
the automotive scene is a community. I mean, now you've got EPA cracking down on racing parts and all that stuff ah, and no more bullshit. modifying vehicles. That's retarded. I mean, it's a lifestyle. It's it's a choice. And you know how many companies are going to have to close down if they pass that shit? Oh, it's terrible. How many people will be out of work? Well, why it's the just, fuck do they care? They're closing all these this other shit down, putting people out they, of work. Because it's, it's the I, I'm not I don't want to go into the government politics because yeah yeah for sure my own take on that. Um, but it, it, it's it's just some stupidity. It's all stupidity. It's control, and that's what they want. And you know, I I feel I feel like it's stupid because. So many people express themselves through their vehicles. I know guys right now, and, and this is no joke. I know guys right now that have, and, and I'm not trying to call any names or anything like that, but, you know, they have illness. I'm going to just call it an illness uh, as far as maybe Lord. maybe they're not able to speak properly. Smart as a whip, but can't get words out. Uh, you know, maybe they have, deform- you know, maybe they're handicapped and they can't walk. I know guys like that right now, right now, that have some of the baddest whips in the world, and they express themselves through that, you know, because they can't, they they don't know how else to outlet, and it helps them in, mentally and physically to get through some of the situations they've been going through. You start taking that away from people, I mean, you're just, you're killing a whole section of, of, of the enthusiasts that need a whole section of dudes. It's terrible. You know, it, it's people that need it because they have to have an outlet. You know, it, I, I mean, I have a, I have a guy right now, a friend of mine. Um, he built his truck for the fallen soldiers when he was serving his country. And it's built entirely around the fallen soldiers that he had that were in his platoon and around him and everything else. And it was the way he dealt with it and coped. He built a truck in their honor. You know, that's huge. That says volumes. And I think that it's just stupid that the, you know, they're trying to jack the whole car community and vehicle community out. You know, they've already cracked down on deleting trucks, but the, the, the proof is in the pudding on this one too. You delete a diesel, it runs better, it, it performs better, it's actually cleaner if you tune it right. You know, not this soot tune that a lot of people are hopping up with, but you can tune them. You could you could delete and tune the truck and have it run better for them from the factory and get more fuel mileage. Isn't that what we're supposed to be getting anyway? Is better fuel mileage? Yeah, exactly. So we're not consuming as much, but you put this death fluid and all this other garbage that you don't need. So I mean. I think there's so much stuff twisted right now that I think everybody's trying to get in everybody's business. And I think it's time for them to just take a step back. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> I mean, not to play the devil's avocado, but I mean, they're going to see it the same way. They're going to say, Hey, you guys need to like sit back. I mean, with thunder customs, I've, there's been people that, you know, they're like, Oh, it has to be this certain size and all this other shit. Like it's crazy. They regulate pieces of metal. Like, fuck they're like i was like do you want because we're talking details wise and they want to do a really detailed piece and they're like oh i want to do a six inch chip and i was like yeah it, it's kind of hard to get a, a ton of detail but i mean we can do it i'm like you'd be better off with an eight inch and he's they're like uh the guy i was talking to he's like well the emissions place around here won't let me have anything bigger than a six or you know i'll get a ticket for it i'm like really i'm like he's like yeah i mean I have it where if I put an eight on there, it wouldn't defeat sound or nothing like that. It's just because they don't like it just because they don't like it. And it's bullshit. Well, I mean, it's just like, I've got a uh, HB rolling me and him. were talking, um, I guess two days ago and we did the live with it about his show uh, coming up, but you know, we were talking and I was telling him about, you know, how my truck's axle dump, you know, I got a gas truck, but it's axle dump. And I like the sound of it. It sounds really good. Just, you know, bounce it off the ground. And he said, we can't do that where I live. And he lives in Atlanta. I mean, he's two hours away from me. But their emissions won't let them axle dump under an SUV. It's like, why not? He's like, I don't. He said something about the gases or fumes coming back into the truck or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, we've axle dumped so many Tahoes down here in Augusta, you know, I mean, even my, my brother personally, we actually dumped his Tahoe and 
there's no fumes coming back in the truck. It, it, I mean, if there is, I don't smell any carbon dioxide or anything. And we've I mean, written that yeah. all over. So it's just, but, you know, and that's what I was telling him. I said, well, man, maybe we should kick it old school and just take our exhaust tips out and, you know, do the old angle style on them. And that's actually what I'm thinking about doing is, is going back to that style anyway, just because it's played out. And I like being different. So, but it, it's just crazy how much control they think they have to have over everybody's lives. I mean, just like the the whole, they're trying to pass the red flag laws where it's legal for cops to just enter your house because they think you got a gun. Yeah, they just come right in. I'll tell you right now, you come in my house, I don't care if you're law enforcement, whoever, you come in my house uninvited, you will be meeting my guns. You know? All yeah, of and them. that's that's bullshit. It's, it's, what's, where's the fucking line? Where's the line at? I don't well, see it anymore. Privacy? You know, we don't have any privacy in this world. Um, and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will try and say, hey, well, you know, you put your life out on social media. No, we don't. No, my yeah, personal, no, we fucking don't. My personal life is not on social media. Oh my gosh, man. Millions of people message me constantly. I love it. But um, yeah, man, I, I just, uh, I, I think as far as the automotive community goes, we need to make a stand together to show we're not going to put up with the bullshit. And I say that with the utmost respect to anybody that's listening to this, but it's serious. We have to make a stand. And I think the other major part of that is, you know, uh, I don't want to go into politics too much, like I said, but at the same time, there's another thing that's been kind of going on right now in, and a lot of my friends are dealing with it, but that's race hate. Oh, I've, extremely. I've never, I've never seen it as racism. Um, I, I've never dealt with it personally, but I know a lot of guys that they have. And for me, it's one of those things of, I don't think it's there like that. I think it's there because media and, everything else drives it. that they create that narrative and it hypes people up to where you think everybody's divided and i think if if we literally sat down with each other and understood there's no divide that it's not a hate thing anymore it's really a respect thing and if you do have hate it's not because of the color of your skin it's because they're more hating you in general because of what you've accomplished that you can understand more you know what i'm saying oh, me yeah. in, in general i know two guys that really hate my guts but they don't hate me because of me they hate me because of what i've accomplished where Mark, I'm i going. hate you because you're white come on now you, you know exactly. well, yeah, that's the thing. It, it, everybody blames it on on a race thing but dude it's really not racist it's really it's because they're jealous of you yeah definitely i mean and that I mean, the way I look at it is somebody's freaking hating me because they're jealous of me, then I'm doing something right. You oh, know? fuck yeah. You're, I mean, you got eyes on you. Exactly. But I mean, I'm I mean a, you, yeah, race you know what? I mean, a lot of people don't understand this, and I want to put this on the record. You're not doing something right if you don't have a hater. Oh, for sure. You're a nobody if you don't have your own personal hater. I've got one. I'm super excited to announce that I have a hater and they call me out on YouTube and they've called me out on Instagram and they've called, I've got haters and I'm proud of it. It's great. Thank you guys that hate me because you pushed me to do better and keep doing more. It makes me excited every time I read a hateful comment because oh, for that sure. just means I'm doing something right. You know? <laughs> and I think that's a difference with the automotive community compared to like you can go on a lot of youtube channels and then you know you don't see a video for a couple months and then they come back and they say oh blah 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 blah. you know just getting a lot of hate comments blah, blah. like for instance let's go large scale tiktok charlie d'amelio she got a bunch of hate one time she just came on a live stream to start crying and bullshit right there's there's people like us that would go on a live stream and you got like 99 percent are haters and there's that like five ten good people in that live you and you know we all only talk to those those five ten people but we appreciate all 99 percent of the haters because yeah, you're i mean doing something right you're doing well, something not only right. that but 
I mean, I look at it like this. You can hate me all you want. You're not going to ruin my life. You can't change my life and my outcomes because you hate me. Not only that, but the more you get on and comment, the more you get on and bash or whatever and, and follow and blah, blah, blah. Hey, the better ratings you're giving me, regardless of whether you hate on me or not. I, I, I mean, obviously I'm doing something right. If you keep following me around, I mean, it's just like a bully. I mean, they're jealous of you. You, you obviously you're doing, you've got something they don't have, you know, most bullies, it's some, some, they got parent problems at home or whatever, you know, they're, they've got their own issues. And instead of dealing with them, like everybody else, they take it out on everybody else. Well, I mean, if you're willing to do that, Hey, that means that I'm doing better than you. I, I like it. Keep coming. Cause I'm going to keep doing better than you. I feel bad for you, bro, but I'm going to do me, you know? <laughs> and so I don't, I don't have any issues with haters. I mean, I, I actually love my haters. Well, yeah, going off that, there's, I mean, we had a TikTok that just blew up. I don't know if you saw it. I mean, with TikTok fame, I'm just kidding. But um, put out a, t- uh, a TikTok. It's sitting at 685,000 views and 126,000 likes. Um, and, it, I mean, you scroll through the comments. I mean, there's only 483 comments. There's not a lot. Right. they're all great but then there's like that 10 percent that's like um we want to see it on a truck put it on a truck i bet you won't put it on a truck and it's like most of them they're like okay you know they're just interested but then you get those some that are calling you a clown just calling you out right and mm-hmm. i think the funny part is i just post a couple more and you know those people come back and they say are you gonna put them are you gonna ever put them on trucks you just gonna take videos of them put them on tiktok and i'm like I make the things that I, I, I get them to people. If they make, if they take pictures and send them to me, or if they take good pictures and I can use them, that's not me. That's them. I make their product. And you know, that's, that's the end of the road for me, unless I sponsor right. them and I ask for pictures, that's their thing, whether they put it out or not, they paid for it. They bought it. That's I don't right. make the rules here. Like <laughs> I don't think people understand that. And I think well, and that's the same thing with never satisfied. I mean, you know, we, we don't, build anything or anything like that but you know we sell decals and shirts and merchandise and stuff like that because you know ours is more of a brand on on representing what you love and you know being never satisfied with what you're what you're doing you know constantly having that urge to build and and add more to your ride and or upgrade your ride i mean you know whatever whatever the case may be but it those people, I mean, if they want to send in a picture of their windshield with the decal on it or their back glass, or wherever they put it, we're more than happy to post it. But if they don't send it in, I can't post the. I've got 13,000 decals out there right now. I can't do that. Nobody really, you know what I'm saying? Like, you it's got just 13,000 decals out there, Mert. We've got, I think the last time I checked our sales, we've sold close to 20. Well, no, yeah, it was close to it was like 11, it was the high 11s, it was close to 12,000 decals, and that's everything from our Instagram tags. Because when we do an Instagram tag, instead of doing the normal camera, it has the NSB skull where the lens would be. Um, that's our Instagram tags. If we make an Instagram tag, that's also including our new style, never satisfied builds logo. That's including our skulls. That's including our full logos. Yeah, we've got close to tw- close to twelve out right now. So I- I'm shooting for almost forty by the end of the year. But I mean, that's I mean, all if people want to be a part and good. represent the brand, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, and you don't. We've kind of talked about it a little bit. You don't do a lot of marketing. I mean, you do, but I really don't. I don't yeah. do a lot of marketing. Um, uh we do shows smaller shows we don't do daytona we don't because you know the my big thing is is i so one of the things that we've always done as our brand is we support the small guy um we support the up-and-comers we support the the small businesses we support you know that's what we our bread our our idea of a good idea is because yes we've been We've been hurt in the past. I mean, I, I had a, a train horn company that yeah, I we talked about that a little out, bit too. Yeah. I went out of my way and got him started. I got him a page and blah, blah, blah. All he had to do was sell his horns. 
that's it, man. I, I was helping him run everything. I was posting pictures on his page. I was doing it all. And it's, you know, next thing I know, it's where did you go? I mean, I haven't heard from you in months. And we did a 5K giveaway and one of the winners got a free horn. Well, I already paid for the horns and for the shipping. And the guy never got them. And it's like, man, that's messed up. But, you know, I've been burned by guys like that. And it's, you know, they don't have the ambition or drive, but I'm also willing to step out of my comfort zone to see if you have that drive. And that's where we come into like F and fast license plate covers. Those guys, that man right there has an ultimate drive to be on every single vehicle. He's with Lacey Blair, Scoop SMG, uh, just you name the big guys, he's with them. But he started with me. He started with me with never satisfied builds and grew from that. And he was persistent and kept growing and growing. And that shows me somebody who really cares about their brand and their business. And that's why I'll always support him. And we also have other companies that, Hey, they don't really, they don't really get involved. Um, they don't really push their products. Uh, Shark tail hitch, great guy pushes the shit out of his product, loves his product. That's his baby. And he goes to shows and he does venues and he does everything. And, and I have the OG shark tail hitch. I have the very first one that was ever powder coated. I have the very first one of the batch that it was his, basically his trial run. And, you know, he, he keeps asking me, you know, what do you want for helping me out? What do you want? I've got it. I've got your very first hitch. Who else can say that? You know, I've got the, I've got the OG that means something to me because I've watched him grow to where he is today, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. and so for me, that's, that's one of those things. Like when I work with companies, you know, especially with companies that want to work with us that want to grow. Um, one of the things that we do is, and, and I'm, I'm saying this on a podcast only for the reason of, if you guys have a company, if you're listening to this, and you would like us to help you grow in any way or, or to help you with your social media or however you're needing help, we can do it. We, we have the means, we have outlets, we have, we have trucks, we have whatever you need. We can get your stuff out there and get it noticed, you know? Um, but, you know, one of the things that we do, and, and basically it's on my truck, but if I'm going to promote you, I have to be paid in some way. If I'm going to take my time out and do it, I have to be paid in some way. So basically what I, what I ask for in return is, Hey, send me some of your products to put on my truck. And if you put it on my truck, I can shout it out even more because I'm going to shows and pointing it out. And a lot of people, Hey, I don't know if I could do that, blah, 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 you know, whatever. But then there's those guys like Patriot lighting. He sent me a set of wheel lights. He put them on. Matter of fact, I fuck up the wild way to come and help me fix my wheel lights because he wants me to represent him. That, that shows a man in business, you know, that wants to be a hundred percent for his customers to me. And that kind of stuff resonates, you know, it shows me about companies. And like I said, I've got companies that have a great product, but they're not really prone to pushing it. Velocity great product great product they have a throttle response controller it's for newer vehicles basically when your car comes out of the shop it's not a hundred percent they keep it down around 60 70 percent on yeah. your throttle you put a throttle response controller on there it will wake your truck your car up it will in a heartbeat bam and you'll see it and you'll notice you feel it great company they don't even make a pedal commander for my truck because it's too old. And yet they custom built me one. Yeah, that's that, pretty sick. That's awesome. You know, and I love it. I love it. Um, you know, and, and we work with other companies. We can work with Fresh Motor Company. It's an air freshener group. I don't hear from them. I don't get products. I don't get anything to shout out. They never send me any of their flyers. They don't do anything with us. They just, they, we have a discount code with them and that's it. 
You know, they're they're one of the companies that's on the chopping block right now with us. I want companies that are involved that want to grow. That's what I look for. And if you guys are out there and you want to be involved and you that's your baby, you have a passion, you want it to be more, definitely send us a DM or or something, you know, hit us up because we can we can definitely help or point you in the right direction. Even if you don't want to do a sponsorship program with us, we can point you in the right direction. You know, we're always here to help. So anyway. oh yeah. And and I we we've talked about a lot of stuff like that, but um there's a lot of brands out there and we've kind of talked over um, a lot of the people you work with. Is there a company out there that you would, uh, you know, fangirl over if they reached out and said, Hey, would you be down to do some partnership or something like that? I'm going to be totally honest with you. I think that's one of my problems is I don't fangirl over anybody. Um, you know, I, one of the most popular YouTubers, right now lives right up the road from me jw montoya i've i've partnered up with him multiple times i mean we built a tahoe together i mean it was just but i never fangirled i never i i don't fangirl over uh companies or people or i get excited i get excited but i don't that would be any company you know i would get excited somebody called me and said hey man we're making i i don't know we got a new wax pad it's just wax on a pad would you be willing to try it out i'd be excited because those people actually you know they actually want to work with us that makes me excited um for instance for instance insane tire gel all right uh, it's a guy it's just him he started it it's a tire gel smells amazing i mean oh my god god the smell when you're putting it on i mean it may, <laughs> you just want to drink the shit it smells so good <laughs> we don't want that to happen but uh but it's a tire gel and i mean dude when it goes on and dries oh it's it's amazing it lasts for god almighty but it's not like a paint it's not like a like a aerosol you know that sticks and it gets all sticky and you can't scrub it off and it's just ridiculous no it it literally just latches on and it'll it'll last for weeks I love that company and that guy's done nothing. He, he, we, we don't have a support code with him. We don't have, he's just wanted me to try his product. And, and I was excited to, I, I actually, I have another bottle of it. I've already used a whole bottle um, on my truck, other people's truck, people down the road's truck. I mean like, Hey man, have you heard of this company? Try this out because this is amazing. You need to try this. You know what I'm saying? That, even stuff like that. I mean, like I said, we don't, even if we don't work with you personally as helping you grow, I just get excited about, you know, new products or, or new companies or something like that. So I don't really think I would fangirl over anybody. Um, I mean, I, if flog or, or, or some company like that, you know, I've got high respect for those guys. Um, if, if like Nate reached out to me, he's like, Hey man, you know, we're, we're thinking about, doing a different kind of bumper for your your body style truck would you want to try it out like, yeah man heck you know yeah like super excitement i don't think i'd fangirl but i would have you know that high excitement about it um but no i don't i don't think i would fangirl over anybody any product um, i got you i got you i mean and honestly for me it, once again man it's the smaller companies that really make a difference in the world because they're trying to compete with the larger companies. Um, and I feel like everybody should have a place uh, to grow and to expand and everything else. But um, I think smaller companies make me more excited um, than the larger companies. Not that the larger companies like, you know, wouldn't don't, don't do it for me, but I think the smaller companies are really what gets me pumped about doing what I do. For sure. For sure. And I got a, a body style question for you there's a lot of trucks that love, you know, we just talked about flog bumpers or, you know, you get over thunder customs, you get octagon exhaust tips. Um, people are moving to a lot more geometrical shape um, accessories for their truck. Do you think it is, um, do you think it is as relevant as it should be? Do you think it's, you know, or it should be more relevant? Do you think, or is it overplayed? Um, man, that's a good question. 
I think you know everybody's got their own style, their own taste. Um, I think the octagon tip is kind of played out, but I don't think I don't think it's. Let's see. Dead? How would I put this? Is that what you're looking for? It, there's I don't, definitely a lot out there. Yeah, I think there's a lot out there. I just think the styles that go with it are what carry it along. You know what I'm saying? If you had just a st- standard octagon tip on every single truck, then, yeah, that's played out. But because of the style that you can add to it with the overlays and the different colors, and you know, that's what keeps that style floating. It keeps a drive on it. Um, for me, I like them because you kind of have those different angles that show you a different side of it. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. I know that's kind of oh, yeah. weird. But, yeah, no, I got you. But they, you, you get a different angle and different perspectives with, an, with the overlay and everything like that. You know, um, as far as the bumpers go, I mean, you can't really do a round style bumper unless you're going to use stock mostly because everybody uses sheet steel and that's what you have to work with now what about a molded bumper i mean you could do a molded bumper but it's going to be so much work to make that it's not worth it you know um i mean it can be done but what if there were you know let's say there's a clientele for it a if big, a, a big I ask think, for it. I think there is a clientele for something like that, for something that keeps it more streamlined, especially on these new trucks, these new round, you know, everything's going back to round. It's it, the squared off. And then, so basically you went through like the OBSs, you know, they were all squared off, boxy, box, 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 box. Then you went into kind of the round body features of the Chevrolets and the Fords were, were both more rounded. Uh, more bubbly looking and then you go into the cat eyes and then the ford of that generation that are a little more squared off but more angles sharp edges kind of thing so i mean you know it's all got patterns yeah and and they're all flowing and it's just going to be a cycle it's just going to go back we're just going to drive a raindrop at one point i mean exactly right now we're 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 digressing back into the box stage you know, into the squared off front ends. I mean, they have a lot of curvy angles in them, but they're more of a square. You know, the new F-250s is just straight up and down, straight back and forth, blah, 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 straight, 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 square, box. Yeah. You know, it, the new the new GMCs are the same way. The new Chevrolets are the same way. Yeah, they may have curbs on their grills and headlights and everything else, but the overall shape is just a box. Um I think we're going back to that style. And honestly, I would love, I would love to see somebody take the new style, the new vehicle and can, and just do a build as if it was back in 1990 on a Ford F100. I mean, a Ford F150, excuse me, or like, you know, 1500 or something like that. I would love to see that old school style brought onto a new school truck. You know, the boggers, the 16 by, you know, 18s, deep dish, all that stuff, you know, that would be killer. The headache rack, something like that, just to do a throwback tribute would be really cool to see um, if it was done properly and nice. But I think that, you know, with the direction we're going, I mean, you have to, you have to throw the the hard lines on it because if you do rounded, it may not go with that style, you know? I completely understand. Um, going off of, you know, stuff like that, there is a new trend ish, new trend ish coming out. Um, what are your opinion on bed rail covers? Uh, well, bed, well, frame rail covers, my apology. Frame rail covers. Like in the back under the bed. Yeah. Yeah. Under the bed and the rear wheel wheel. Um, I like them. I think they're pretty cool looking. Uh, you I, I don't I don't like when people do them in the back and they don't have any kind of powder or color in the front. I think that looks funny. But at the same time, I think it looks funny if you've got the front, you know, coils all powdered and everything like that, but you have nothing in the rear. So I think, you know, there's a happy medium to both. Uh, I, 
I do like all the intricate designs that you can do on them and the, you know, you could customize them to personal style, personal levels. Uh, I mean, hell, you could even get them with your Instagram tag in them or, or the name of your truck or whatever. I, I yeah, think anything really, really. Yeah. I mean, you could do pretty much anything. Um, and I think they're really cool looking. I mean, it is a different, it's a different way to take away from the ugly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it dresses up the ugly. Nobody wants to see the, when, when you look in the wheel well and you're looking under the bed and at the top of the frame, it takes away from that disgusting and adds a whole new level of custom to your truck. So with, I like, yeah. I think they're cool. Yeah. And with that, that has been the Dirty Hands Clean Money Podcast. Uh, it's been Merck with NSB. Let the people know where they can find you and uh, we'll go with that. You can check us out. We've got an uh, Instagram page. It's at never, satis- never underscore satisfied underscore builds. Look for the NSB skull in our uh, little logo. Um, we've got a website at never satisfied builds.com. Um, other than that, man, I look forward to seeing you guys out there. And if you need anything, you hit us in the DMs and we'll catch y'all on the next one. That has been episode number four. We hope to be hitting you guys with some more content very, very soon. Hope you guys have a good rest of your day.